Today, I'll be taking us through the subject, how to succeed in business. Now, let me, let me, make, let me give a warning. If you're joining this church for the very first time, you are likely to wonder whether you are in a business class. Yes, it's going to be an extremely business class. You will feel like you're seated in an MBA class. Don't be offended. Don't make judgment with one Sunday. We have been doing a series on how to succeed in your professional life, and we are concluding today with how to succeed in business. So let me warn you in advance, the whole lesson today will sound like a business class. The good news is this. The Bible has the answer to everything we do as Christians. The Bible addresses marriage, parenting, business, work, health, our personalities, our personal branding, eager management, stress management, depression. The Bible is the answer to every situation in life today. So I want you to see what God says about business today because it is his desire for us to have kingdom millionaires. Are you ready? So let's go to the business school today. How to succeed in business, number one. I'm going to share with you some 10 Ps. In other words, the 10 principles all start with the letter P. The first P is purpose. Purpose. And I want to suggest you are never created to chase money. You are created to pursue meaning, significance, and purpose. Jesus said in Matthew 6, 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things you're pursuing, paying bills, buying a car, going for holiday, buying homes, shall be added unto you. Then he gave two examples from an animal and a plant. Look at the birds of the air. They are not bothered with paying the bills, yet they never sleep hungry. Look at the flowers of the field, the lilies of the field. They are not stressed like you guys. Yet even Solomon in his purple royal clothes, in the splendor of his majesty, was not as beautiful as these flowers. That means when you are just concerned with paying bills, when you are just concerned with making ads meet, you are operating beneath animals and plants. Jesus is challenging you, respect yourself, pursue something higher, find out what was in the mind of God when he conceived you. Pursue that course, pursue your role in the kingdom of God as an accountant, as an architect, as a pilot, as a musician, as a preacher. Everything you do in this life is unto God. Seek ye first to fulfill your purpose. And all these things shall naturally follow you. Money is a byproduct of pursuit of purpose. Never chase money. Money is too fast. You can't chase it. It's liquid. It's a current ever flowing. But money can be attracted. Just like water can be attracted by constructing a dam that flows towards the dam. A wise old man said, if you take all the money in the world today, Distribute it among all the people. In a short few years, that money will go back to the same pockets. It's true because you will still use Facebook and give Mark Zuckerberg the money. It is true because you will still use Microsoft products and give Bill Gates the money. It is true because you will still buy things by Amazon and we will take back all the money to Jeff Bezos. It is true because in a few short years, all of you, all of you will be driving solar cars. Gasoline cars must exit. You will remember that. Elon Musk had seen ahead, and you will give him back the money. Even if you are given the money and you have no system, the money will soon disappear to the people with a system. Now, the Bible says on your screen, the Lord will fulfill his purpose for me. Say this after me, the Lord will fulfill, the Lord will fulfill. His, purpose his purpose for me. Let me warn you, it's not your purpose. You didn't create yourself. Someone created you. And the Bible says you may have many plants, but His purpose will prevail over your plants. 
Proverbs 19.21. Many are the plans in a man's heart, but the Lord's purpose will prevail. Your first assignment on earth is to figure out the purpose of God for your life. Your second assignment is to pursue that purpose with singleness of heart. The first principle to succeed not just in business, but in anything, is to be sure. Crystal clear, this is God's purpose for my life. Because if you take a car and you don't understand its capacity, you'll either misuse it, abuse it, or underutilize it, underuse it. And there are people who don't even know the potential in their phones. They can only text and call. Others are producing videos and making money from the same phone. Does that make sense? I'll share so much about purpose. It's my pet subject. Let's go to the second P. Passion. Passion. You can't succeed in anything, live alone business, unless you're passionate. The driving force that keeps you going. And passion comes in two packages. What you love with passion, what you hate with passion. Let me give you two examples. A friend of mine by the name Simon. He loves traveling together with his wife. They started a company by the name Bonfire Adventures. They love traveling. They are a phenomenal success. I used to organize high sea cruises to teach people about purpose. This is the guy who used to organize for me. But he naturally loves traveling. If you don't love children, don't launch a school. If you don't love singing deep down your heart, get out of the music team. It will be frustrating. If you don't love something, you will hate Monday mornings because you are doing it because you have to so that you pay the bills. If you continue doing what you hate, you will eventually hate yourself. But the other side of passion is what you hate with passion, what you loathe, what you can't stand. Is it Martin Luther King hated racism? Nelson Mandela hated apartheid. What can't you stand? Is it domestic violence? Is it rape? Is it poverty? Is it corruption? Is it destruction of the environment? Because usually when you pursue something that you love, or hate with passion, you will succeed. There must be an inner energy that drives you. On your screen, the Bible says, work willingly at whatever you do, as though you are working for the Lord rather than for people. Anything you're doing, be sure you are God's employee. He is your employer, and he will demand accountability from the assignment he gave you. You are Jesus' bold servant. You are the Lord's servant, the Bible teaches. The third P, picture. A leader must see what others cannot see. If you're the business leader, you must be seeing what your employees are not seeing. The picture or the future, we call it vision. And one of these days, I will teach on this subject alone, personal visioning. How to cast your personal vision. Now on your screen, where there is no vision, I can't hear you. Where there is no vision, can I break it down for you? If Mr. Cunningham has no vision for our music, our music is doomed. If your pastor has no vision for the church, the church is doomed. If you have no vision for your family as a man, that family will crush if you have no vision for your business, that business will collapse. A leader must see what others cannot see. You must be able to know where you are taking people. You must visualize it because everything is created twice. Everything. In the mind of the creator and then in the physical realm. Everything that exists is created twice. In the mind of the creator, the inventor, the innovator, the designer. And then in the natural dimension. The phone you're holding was conceived in the mind of Steve Jobs before 
he commanded the assembly line to begin to run. What are you seeing? If there is no vision in a country, the country collapses, and some of them are failed states because of lack of vision. Habakkuk 2.2. And the Lord answered me and said, Write the vision and make it plain upon tables, that he may run that treats it. Now, God starts with an example. He has written down his vision for you and me to read beyond the end of this age. That's our father. He expects you to have a vision and to write it down, to have a clear picture of where you are going, a very clear picture. And many believers cannot tell you where they will be five years to come. I was listening to Elon Musk explaining his vision in the next 30 years. He conceived this thing that one day people will be serious with climate change. People didn't believe him. They wondered, why on earth should I buy a solar car? My gasoline car is working. Why should I fix it if it ain't broke? I'm telling you, right now as we speak, not tomorrow, right now, in Sweden, they have issued a law. By 2030, all cars must be solar cars. Think about that. Here is a man who single-heartedly saw what even the government could not see. That's a leader in his own right, in his field, a business leader. Number four, persistence. And I begin by saying nothing can stand the way of someone who persists. You can resist them for a while, but you will give way. Resisting someone with resilience is like studying the way of a roaring rock down the hill. Persistence. All my students, there are some things they must know. Because I will repeat them until they're in your blood. Watch me. Give me your eyes right now. Assume I'm holding an axe, and this is a tree, and I want to cut it down. I sharpen my axe, and I hit this tree. One, two, three, four, five. I get tired. I'm exhausted. I rest. Tomorrow is Monday. Same tree, same spot. One, two, three, four, five. Not a hundred times. Not 20 times, just five times. But I repeat on Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. Next week but one, Monday, Tuesday. Please, I want to hear from all of you. The tree will? Oh. I can hear you, the tree will? Oh. Some trees may take two years. Others two months, others two weeks. Surely as the day follows the night, that tree will fall. This is the basic truth that makes many gifted, educated people fail. Simple might succeed. These students employ a students. The ability to hold on. The ability to hang on. The ability to stay the course. So you fight someone listening to me right now in this congregation. Right now they are working in a restaurant. A month later, they're in a supermarket. Three months later, they're in a hospital. Four months later, they're in a truck, mastering no skills. They know a little bit of everything, but they are masters of nothing. No one can die to look for your skill in ICT, in finance, in marketing. And that's the challenge I want to give you, because the way out to succeed is when people recognize you as a master in the sound system, in the music system, in hair, in food. That's the charge I'm giving you. Paul says, Philippians 3.13, this one thing I do, not 20 things. I have discovered my one thing. I have known my tree. People cut one tree in January, another tree in June, another tree in December. At the end of the year, they have attempted the entire forest, but no tree is coming down. Ask your neighbor, what is your tree? What is your tree? Yes. Yeah. Proverbs 28, 20. The trustworthy person will get a rich reward, but a person who wants quick riches will get into trouble. 
The reason we keep on hopping from one business idea to another, from one job to another, is because we are attempting quick fixes, quick riches. There are no elevators to the top. You've got to take the staircase. Study everyone who succeeded. They did one thing over and over again. Let me see whether this makes sense. I will mention a few names. Tell me what you identify them with. Bill Gates. Come on, louder. Bill Gates. Microsoft. Jeff Bezos. Amazon. Elon Musk. Tesla. Mark Zuckerberg. Can I test you outside America? I see how well you can do internationally. Jack Ma. Alibaba. <laughs> What's the point? All these guys, you recognize them with one thing. What about you? Ten things. And you wonder why you're broke. This one thing I do. Number five, be positive. The, f the fifth P, positive. You all came across this glass when you are in college, and the debate still remains. Are you an optimist or a pessimist? An optimist sees the glass half full. We, the glass is almost full. We have water to drink. The pessimist sees the glass half empty. We don't even have enough water to drink. How do you see life? James, the half-brother of the Lord Jesus Christ, must have listened to Christ properly. He said, and I quote, in chapter 1, verse 7 and 8, a double-minded person receives nothing from God. Nothing from God. He who comes to God must believe that he is and he is a rewarder of they that diligently seek him, the Bible says. Without faith, it's impossible to please God. Hebrews 11, 6. There is nothing you achieve unless you believe the outcome is in your favor. Watch me right now. These are your expectations in life. They are your life ceiling. You will never rise above your expectations in life. Never. If you expect to divorce, you will not be disappointed. If you expect to be broke, you will not be disappointed. If you expect to be sick and depressed, you will not be disappointed. On the other hand, if you expect happiness, you will not be disappointed. The Bible says the expectations of the righteous shall not be cut short. The question remains, what are your expectations? What are you expecting today? Do you expect to fight and quarrel? Or do you expect good tidings and blessings? You will never get the anointing you fight. You will never get the world you fight. You will never get the riches you speak against. What are your expectations? That's what you will get. That's your life's ceiling. Let me give you my expectations. I expect to live with mercy until the Lord takes me home. <laughs> my daughter turned 16. I bought her a car. Seven days later, she was in the highways. I sat with her. I explained to her the most important thing in driving is confidence. And the most dangerous thing is fear. Come on. You have to drink from the cup of confidence which your father drinks every day. God, you can do it and ride on my confidence. By the third day, we were on the Dallas Highway. Most of you are scaring your children. You are going to have accident. Let me tell you, they will have it. Keep threatening them how they can get accidents. Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. Life and death is in the power of your tongue. Right. Clean up your expectations. Right. Are you with me? Right. On your screen, the Bible says, Jesus said. Matthew 21, 22. You can pray for anything. And if you have faith, you will receive it. Those are the words of Jesus. The Alpha and the Omega. The Yes and the Amen. These are the words of the one who said, Heaven and earth shall pass away, but my words shall not pass away. Not even. What do you call it? A drop of the pen. None of them shall pass away. I tell you today, if you have faith, 
you must trust the dots will connect in your favor. Number six, principles. You must have some principles that guide you, that govern you. Business ethics. By the way, there is no such a thing as business ethics. It's ethics. Ethics are ethics anywhere. And by principles, I'm saying, how, what's your relationship with your employees, with your business partners, with the government? As a Christian, you must pay your taxes. Commandment number eight, do not steal. You must pay your taxes. I'm telling you right now. You're riding on a government that has put up roads for you, security for you. If you don't pay taxes, you're stealing. You are a shoplifter. As a believer, you must be honest with your business partners. Every time you steal from your business partners, you are cursing your business. You must also be honest with standards. If you are a mechanic and you repair my car suspension, I shouldn't visit the garage in the next one year with the same problem. If you're a beautician and you're making my nails and my hair, I want to hear others say, wow, it is good. If they don't, I need my saloon hairdresser to tell me what's going on. Did you do your job? Whatever your hand fights to do, do it with all your might. Ecclesiastes 9.11. That's the attitude of God's children. Honesty is not one of the principles. Honesty is the principle of doing business as a believer. On your screen we read, Proverbs 13, 11, this honest money dwindles away, but whoever gathers money, little by little, makes it grow. That's why Christians must never participate in betting. Betting is trying to look for a shortcut to the top. If you participate in betting, stop it. Can I tell you something? <laughs> I tell you, the guys who started betting clubs did not start to benefit you. They're in business. They have done their maths. My background is statistics. I'm telling you today, the odds are 1 to 99 that you will succeed through betting. But even if you make some money through betting, two years later, you will not have a coin. You see, money is not kept through a sudden gift or a sudden fortune. Money is kept and sustained by a system followed by work ethics, ability to get along with employees and customers, suppliers of goods and services. Those disciplines, that's what keeps money. The reason people go betting is trying shortcut to the top. And the word of God addresses every issue in life and Solomon, the wisest dude after Adam, before the fall, says, no, -uh, don't do that. Gather money, little by little. Number seven, plans. Let's go back to the story of God. Think about the plan God has. Beyond the close of his age, God has a plan. But that's not enough. He wrote it down. I can teach you eschatology today. Why? God has put his plan on paper. You can read it on your screen. For I know the plans I have for you, declares the Lord, plans to prosper you and not to harm you, plans to give you hope and a future. What is God saying? I have a plan. You didn't arrive here and I got surprised. You didn't get saved and I got surprised. You didn't get married and I got surprised. I have plans. I work from a plan. On your screen is Burj Khalifa, Dubai. Can I ask you, is it thinkable? Is it conceivable? Is it imaginable that such a skyscraper, such a tower was put up without a plan? They started building and said, uh, how many floors are you doing? Ah, we will find out as we continue. Do you, can you do a building like that? What will happen if you try? It will collapse. Because you must factor in the height and the weight right at the foundation stage. The weed 
The civil engineers must compute the weed levels in that region. There are places you cannot put such a tower because of the environmental realities. There was a plan, detailed plan, worked for more than a year to have such a tower. And then Jesus talked about it and said, Luke 14, 28, For which of you desiring to build a tower does not first sit down and count the cost, whether he has enough to complete it? So the Lord would even be shocked that you can start a business without doing your math. Launch a ministry without thinking through to the end. The old adage goes, talk to me if you can. If you fail to plan, you plan to fail. Number eight, products. You cannot launch a business until you clarify what you're giving the people. And from a business perspective, there are two types of products. Complementary products and substitute products. Complementary products are products that go hard in hard. Coffee and sugar. They are used together. So people selling complementary products, it's wise for them to sell together, to work together, to launch advertising together. They will cut down their costs. Substitute products are products you use in place of the other. Coffee or tea. If you are completely normal, you don't put tea and coffee in the same cup. And cocoa and chocolate. You don't do that. You use one instead of the other. We call them substitutes. And this is the basis for industrial competition, substitutes. I'm saying this. Whatever you do as a believer, first clarify. If, if I'm selling complementary products, who do I work with? If I'm selling substitute product, a, a, a product that has competition. Now, I never teach how to beat competition, never. That never comes from my mouth. And I'll tell you why. Maybe that's the whole class. But I believe you can render competition irrelevant. Why and how? Look, I go to a certain restaurant, and although there are many restaurants, perhaps what I'm looking for is only available from you because it's Nigerian food because it's Mexico food, because it's Italian food. And even if it's Italian food, perhaps what you're giving is not available in other Italian restaurants. I've done my need analysis. And that way, I am not in competition with other people who are doing restaurant. I can give you my notes. But trust me, you won't preach like me. That doesn't mean I'm better than you. It means I'm different from you. Are you with me? And that's the essence. What differentiates you from the rest of us? Now, on your screen, the Bible says, looks like it's blinking. You know, I, I wear glasses. Is it me or? It's me. <laughs> you can read? Ecclesiastes 11.6. So you are seated in the morning. And do not rest your hands in the evening, for you do not know which will succeed, whether this or that, or if both will equally prosper. Solomon is saying, keep releasing the products in the market. Don't do it once and get tired. Keep the production line working. Keep it open. Keep releasing products. You don't know which one will succeed. Different products, keep testing them on the ground. Keep planting if you are a farmer. Because you don't know when one harvest will make such a huge difference. Number nine, people. Of course, this P is by far the most important of all the ten we are discussing. Because business is done by people, for people, and through people. Now, I have a question for you. Talk to me if you can. Who do you think is more important? Customers or employees? You got it. No, 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 no. Those who said employees. How many said employees? Beatrice. Hey, you're too many for my chocolates. I was about to deliver chocolates. <laughs> yeah, you're right. Look at it this way. Guys, look at it this way. Great entrepreneurs discovered you don't build the business. 
You build the people, and the people build the business. Treat your employees the way you would want them to treat your finest customers. So if you have 50 employees and you reproduce yourself in them, can you think of this? Look at Jesus' model. He focused mainly on the 12, his employees, the guys he used to serve. His three-year ministry, 90% was about transforming himself into 12. For example, one day he asked them, who do people say I am? Oh, they say you're Elijah, you're Jeremiah, you're one of those mighty prophets. Okay, boys, and who do you say I am? Peter, who do you say I am? That's my concern. The other one was just preparing the ground. Who you say I am, Peter? That is the basis of the church. Peter said, thou art the Christ, the son of the living God. What did Jesus say? You are Peter, and on this rock, on this revelation, I will build my church, and the gates of heads shall not prevail against it. What revelation? That Jesus is the Messiah. That was the debate. We're going to talk this Easter Sunday. Let's, lead, let's get back to business. What I'm trying to imply here is this. Jesus focused on duplicating himself in the 12, producing many literal Jesuses. That was his job. So you as a business owner, reproduce your ethics, your values, yourself in the lives of employees. Even when you're not there, they will all treat your customers the way you would have treated them. Does that make sense? Do you know the Bible talks about that? <laughs> it's so funny. Look on your screen what the Bible says about employees. James 5.4. Behold, the wages of the employees, laborers, who mowed your fields, which you kept back by fraud, are crying out against you. And the cries of the harvesters have reached the ears of the Lord of hosts. God here is not concerned with the customers, but employees. They worked for you, you have not paid them. I have now cast your business. I tell you, scriptures address everything in our lives. There are four people you must take care of in your business. One, the priority, employee. Then, of course, customers. Then, suppliers of goods and services. And number four, the regulatory authorities. The government, whether local, state, or national, federal. But the most critical, God is always watching how masters treat servants. Number ten and the last one, prayer. The last P prayer. And the Bible says, Proverbs 16, 3, commit your work to the Lord and your plans will be established. It doesn't matter how, work, how hard working you are, how passionate, how persistent, how calculative, how strategic, how tactical, how networking. Unless God commands his favor, you will never succeed. Promotion neither comes from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. God is the judge. He puts down one and sets up another. Psalm 75, verse 6. Promotion comes from God. Not from your sweat. Not from your networking and cutting deals. Promotion is God's favor. All said and done. Do your part and then commit it to God. Is that simple? Start every day as a Christian entrepreneur on your knees. Pray, God, I pray today for your favor. Give me wisdom to handle employees, customers, partners, suppliers. Lord, I pray for patience when they make mistakes. Help me not to lose my cool. Help me to present you in the marketplace. I want to present you in the industry as you present me in heaven, there is an anointing to make wealth. My God, I don't want to start that. That's the whole lesson. For me right now is to convince you. Pray when you're starting your day. Pray when you're concluding your day. Pray within the day. For me, I pray in the spirit all the time. If I'm not with anyone, that I'm not working, whether I'm walking in the field, whether I'm in the streets, whether I'm driving, I'm praying in the spirit. And I tell you this. Learn to connect with your father, and he will establish your plans. Run away from him, 
and you risk everything you are doing frustrating you. Summary, the 10 Ps, and by the way, when you do these 10 Ps, you can go to the beach with your family and relax because money is now following you. And that's what I'll do today. I'm going to the beach immediately after service. When you do the right thing, world begins to follow you. So let's say together the 10 of them how to succeed in business. Number one? Purpose. Number two? Passion. Mm -hmm. Picture. Persistence. Positive. Principles. Plan. Products. People. Prayer. Will you receive it? Yes. Wow. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you for your word. There may be people in our midst who desire to be entrepreneurs, businessmen, and women. I lift up my hands as their pastor. I bless them today. I pronounce your blessings in their lives, in the work of their hands. For you are the Lord that gives us the power to make wealth. Deuteronomy 8.18. May you give them the power, the anointing, the grace, the favor to make wealth and fund your kingdom. Plant churches all over the world. Finance missionaries. Finance your kingdom. The Lord as a church, we may begin to own TV stations, communication networks for the furtherance of the gospel of your son. Jesus Christ. We bless your name, Jesus. I pray none of these dear ones will lack. David wrote and said, I have been young and now I am old, but I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their seed begging for bread. I pray these dear ones will prosper. Their storehouses will expand because they have their faith and their confidence in the Holy One of Jacob. While we are still praying, if you're watching me online, the first step is to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. God is more concerned with who you become than what you get. I want to invite you right now to accept Jesus Christ to be your Lord and Savior. Pray this prayer with me if you're watching me on Facebook. Lord Jesus Christ. Come into my heart. Be my Savior and my Lord. Fill me with your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. If you prayed that prayer, you are born again. Your sins are forgiven. Do me a favor. Please do me a favor. Right on this Facebook page, I prayed to be saved. If you write those simple words, I will reach out to you and share with you some of my materials to help you grow in your Christian walk. I'll teach you how to identify a good church in your neighborhood. Number two, how to pray. Number three, how to read the word of God. Number four, how to make good friends in Christ. And number five, the meaning of salvation, the decision you have just made. Don't inbox me. I receive so many messages in my inbox. Just write on this Facebook Live, I prayed to be saved. Thank you very much. Church, I want to bless you for the week. Is that okay? Please stand. Let me have your hands like this. Do you expect the Lord to bless you? The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord bless you and be gracious to you. May the Lord keep you in perfect peace. May the Lord keep you in perfect health. May the work of your hands be blessed. May the Lord level every high mountain. May the Lord lift every low valley. I pray in the name of Jesus. Your loved ones who are unwell, we receive instant healing in the name of Jesus. I pray for resources to be released in your hands. Whatever you touch with your hand, I command it to prosper in the name of Jesus. I speak doors to open up on your behalf. Doors the enemy cannot close in the name of Jesus. I call you blessed 
in Jesus' name. Walk this week in power. Walk in victory. In Jesus' name we pray and receive it. Amen and amen. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. Online church, we are super excited that you could come and join with us this morning. I have a very strong feeling you have been blessed like I have been. I have been looking for an elevator to take me to the top, you know, or an escalator, but I'm told there are stairs. It's good to know that this morning. Praise God. Amen. So you want to tell those of you that have friends and family here in Georgia, these doors are open. We will be super, super, super thrilled to have you. And the address is 287 Mount Calvary Road here in Marietta, Georgia. 287 Marietta, Georgia. Let them join us. We continue to thank you for giving of yourselves to bless God with your giving. And, and the details are on your screen. You know, it reminds me as a little girl, I, there was heck no way I was going to go to church without an offertory. You know, I had to have that. And I don't know why I fell along the way. Sometimes I've not been very faithful. And the reason that we gather is to worship him and also to give love offerings. So give cheerfully to the glory and honor of his. Let me continue to remind you that we have a beautiful, beautiful, powerful miracle service. And that is upcoming Friday, April the 2nd. And it's going to be 7 to 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. Please join us, those of you who know friends and family or anybody, your neighbor, who needs that healing power, let them come and join with us. You have been faithful to give us your takeaway. Please do not get tired because guess what? It matters. It matters to dog. So continue to give us your takeaway. Before you get busy, write in the comments line, what was your takeaway. And I do know some of you talk to Marcy and Doc every so often. This is their anniversary weekend. So message them and tell them congratulations. 18 years is not few, right? So message them and congratulate them for sticking together. As you go, the month of April Doc will be sharing about the fundamental truths and meaning of the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ. That is powerful. I need that. We need to have a depth understanding on the foundation of our faith. Praise the Lord. May you be blessed. Walk in purpose and all those good things that we heard. There are 10 of them. Well, it took me a while to say them, but be good. Let's see you on Friday for the miracle service. And may the Lord bless thee. Hey, were you inspired by this video? Kindly like and share with your friends, family, and colleagues. And remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel, Dr. K. N. Jacob, and enjoy hundreds of inspirational videos free of charge.